Laser WebAssembly and Placer Server share many similarities but also have significant differences. In this video, I will share 5 significant differences between Placer Server and Placer WebAssembly that will impact your decision what to choose for your next Placer project. Of course, Placer Server runs on the server and Placer WebAssembly runs on WebAssembly on the client. However, these five differences will go deeper and are more hands-on. If you're new to the Blazor world, this video will give you a great introduction to Blazor development from a different angle. And as a bonus, I will show you one of the biggest and best similarities between Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly at the end of the video. Hi. I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience on the .NET platform. And on this channel, you learn all about .NET development. The project structure is the first difference between a Blazor server and a Blazor WebAssembly project. Take a look at this example. I have a to-do list application implemented as a Blazor server application on the left, as well as a Blazor WebAssembly application on the right. Notice the different number of projects. On the left, we have a single project for the Blazor server application. It includes the Blazor components, the services accessing the data, as well as the data objects themselves. In the Blazor WebAssembly application, we have three projects. The client project includes all Blazor components. The server project contains data access classes such as services and an API layer to communicate between the server and the client using HTTPS. And there's the shared project including classes such as data objects that can be accessed from the client and the server projects. The project structure of a Blazor server application is much simpler. We have access to all the resources from within a single project. Because all the code runs on the server. This first difference already takes us to the second difference. A Blazor server application doesn't have an API layer. However, for Blazor WebAssembly applications, you always have to implement an API layer, even if the client is the only application accessing that API. It has to be that way, for example, to keep the secrets such as the DB connection string on the server. If you have a Blazor server application, you can still share the code between multiple Blazor server applications. For example, you can extract one or even more services into a class library and share it between Blazor server applications. You can, but you are not forced to have multiple projects within a single Blazor server application. The third difference is scalability versus simplicity. A Blazor WebAssembly application downloads to the client and executes in the browser. It only connects to the server when fetching or sending information over HTTP. It puts less pressure on the server, which makes it simpler to scale. For example, you can not only increase the hardware for a single server, but you can also run multiple servers behind a load balancer. A Blazor WebAssembly application can be served from any web server. For a Blazor server application, we have a persistent WebSocket connection using SignalR between the client and the server. Therefore, the web server has to be running an ASP.NET Core application. However, since no WebAssembly is involved, a Blazor server application runs on any device and any browser because it only uses HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Scaling a Blazor application is simple when you add more resources to the same server. However, scaling out Adding more servers becomes complex, because every client has always to be connected to the same server. We can also say that Blazor WebAssembly applications run stateless, 
whereas Blazor server applications run stateful because the server manages the state for each connected client. Another difference to remember is whether we can use the same objects in the Blazor components as well as in the services. I can show you an example. In the index page component, we list all the to-do items. We also have a delete button for each item to remove it from the collection. In the Blazor server application, we inject the to-do service and find the item and remove it from the collection. In the Blazor WebAssembly application, we call an API to delete the to-do item and we provide an ID or in this case, the text of the to-do item. On the server, we call the to-do service from the to-do API controller and provide the text. Within the to-do service, we then take the text, look up for the correct item in the collection and remove it. When using Blazor server, we have all the data and the context we need. When using Blazor WebAssembly, we usually have to reload data from the database for every stateless call. Of course, you can always introduce caching, but that adds another level of complexity. When using Blazor server, the application loads very fast. It only has to download the Blazor JavaScript bundle and render the first page. No matter how big the application grows, the startup will always be very fast since it will only render the HTML and CSS of the first page. When using Blazor WebAssembly, the whole application is downloaded to the client and executed on the initial load. Depending on the application size, it can take a few seconds to load. And with every feature added to the application, the application package grows and the download takes longer. When I start my to-do app, Blazor server is faster as expected. However, the WebAssembly version also loads quickly. If your app mostly runs on mobile devices, Blazor server will be faster on the initial load in most of the cases. Finally, it's time for the bonus. I talked so much about small and big differences between Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly. Now, let's take a look at one of the best similarities between both hosting models. We absolutely must not forget the biggest advantage of Blazor development. We can use the same component model for Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly. The Blazor component model is simple and allows for very fast development. If you implement your services and components correctly, migrating from Blazor Server to Blazor WebAssembly or the other way around is very simple. Let me know if that's something you want to see next on this channel. So, what do we learn from all of this? For simple internal applications, I prefer using Blazor server. You have a good understanding of how many users the application will have at the same time. The programming model is simpler, the code is simpler, there is less code and you don't have a forced API layer. You also have fewer data reloading because the server keeps the state for every client. If you want to build a public facing website with thousands, tens of thousands or even millions of simultaneously users, Blazor server might hit its limits. It will be easier to scale the application using Blazor WebAssembly. Also, suppose your application doesn't need to call the server for every operation. For example, because the application already includes a lot of the logic. In that case, with Blazor WebAssembly, you have less network traffic, making it work better when having bad internet connection or in offline scenarios. The best thing about working with Blazor is that no matter if you choose Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly, a lot of the programming model remains the same. Learning one model also lets you understand the other model. 
and migrating an existing application from Blazor server to Blazor WebAssembly or the other way around is very simple and can be done with reasonable effort. I'm curious about your reasons for choosing Blazor server or Blazor WebAssembly. Please let me know in the comments. Also make sure to let me know if I missed any important differences between the two. If you learned anything from this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to learn more about .NET development and I'll see you in the next video.